We recently sailed with Disney Cruise Line to Alaska, and the one excursion everyone told us we had to experience was the Glacier Explorer Tour on Glacier Day. We bit the bullet and spent $600 on this tour, and it was not what we expected. In this video, we're going to share our personal experience with this tour from start to finish, why we feel it's the biggest gamble you can take on your trip, and why we are likely not going to go out of our way to experience this tour again on a future sailing. <laughs> If you guys are planning on sailing to Alaska with Disney Cruise Line, then more than likely you guys have heard of the Glacier Explorer Tour. If you go on the Disney Cruise Line website, it is labeled as DG01. At the time of me filming this video, this excursion costs a total of $299 for people ages 10 and up, and $199 for anyone under the age of 10. This excursion is definitely one of the more expensive excursions that you can take on your Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation. And prior to me sailing to Alaska for the first time, I have been been told left and right by people that we had to experience this tour. So with all this hype in mind, I decided to go ahead and book myself on the Glacier Explorer tour for our first Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation back in 2022. Unfortunately for us, however, Disney Cruise Line accidentally oversold this excursion and our slot was promptly canceled on embarkation day. So for this cruise in 2022, we decided to try our luck again and we booked the excursion, this time at a higher rate. Embarkation day came and went and we didn't receive any notice of cancellation, so we knew that we were good to go. Now, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind, when you book this excursion, you're gonna have the option of either a 12 o'clock excursion or a three o'clock excursion. We opted for the three o'clock excursion because the morning of your Glacier Day, all the Disney characters are going to be out on the upper decks taking pictures in their Alaska outfits. And this is going to be one of, if not your only opportunity to get pictures with these characters outside on the open decks with the beautiful scenery in the background. And because my girlfriend Coda was sailing with us on this cruise, she also really wanted to get a picture of her favorite Disney character, Coda from Brother Bear. So we got up nice and early on the morning of Glacier Day and we went ahead and hit up the upper decks and got as many pictures as we could with all the Disney characters. By the time everything was said and done and we were satisfied with all the pictures that we took on the upper deck, it was getting close to about 1.30 o'clock. We did have to meet up in the Walt Disney Theater about 30 minutes prior to our excursion leaving, so we were there at about 2.30. Throughout the morning, we were making our way towards the Stikine Ice Fields where we could either make our way into Tracy Arm or Indicott Arm. Now, if you say through Indicott Arm, you will be seeing Dawes Glacier. If you sail through Tracy Arm, then you'll be seeing Sawyer Glacier. So 3 o'clock finally rolls around and the 12 p.m. excursion is back from their tour. We all funnel out of the Walt Disney Theater and we make our way down to the tender boats. Now these boats aren't small by any means, but they're also not a cruise ship either. These are some medium-sized boats that are about three decks tall. The first deck is going to be a completely enclosed space with some comfortable seating, some heating, and a bar with a little gift shop. The second deck is going to be a about half enclosed space with comfortable seating and half outdoor space. And the third deck is going to be completely closed off to all guests unless the boat is completely stopped. We hopped on board the tender boat and immediately made our way up to the second deck where we stood outside and waited for our departure. The anticipation was rising from everyone on deck as we all were getting ourselves prepared to see a magnificent glacier. Well, at least that's what we thought we were getting. We all figured that if these Glacier Explorer Tour excursions were departing the ship that day, that we would be able to go out to the massive glacier that we've all seen in pictures and videos. However, we quickly discovered that that was not the case. Unfortunately, due to the icy conditions of the water, neither the cruise ship nor the tender boats were able to get anywhere near the massive Sawyer Glacier. Instead, our excursion started off with us sailing up to North Sawyer Glacier, which is a much smaller and definitely Definitely not as impressive of a sight as South Sawyer Glacier. This was definitely a case of expectation versus reality because when you book this excursion, you see pictures and videos of these massive glaciers that tower over you. Now, while everybody on board the vessel was definitely very thankful to at least see a glacier that day, it definitely wasn't what we were all expecting. In total, we spent about 30 to 45 minutes at the glacier where the boat did several donuts in the water so that way everybody on board the ship had plenty of opportunity to get some pictures and video of the glacier. After that, we started making our way out of that small fjord where we made a pit stop at a rather large waterfall. The waterfall was beautiful and pretty impressive. 
We were there for about 10-15 eh, minutes before we continued on forward. After that we made our way out of that small fjord where we caught a glimpse of the Disney Wonder making its way back from South Sawyer Glacier. Now my mom did stay on board the ship and did not experience this Glacier Explorer tour with us. When we got back on board the ship my mom reported to us that the ship barely made its way to South Sawyer Glacier and you could only see a small sliver of it in the distance before the ship actually had to turn around. From there our tender boat really hit the gas and we were flying through this fjord. This was definitely probably the most exhilarating and the most fun part of this excursion, getting to tear through the water at full speed through the fjord. The boat did eventually start to slow down as we made our way closer and closer to a large iceberg in the water. Now I know from the video that this iceberg looks rather small, but trust me, this thing was massive. I really do appreciate how close we were able to get to this iceberg. It honestly felt like we were close enough to touch it. It was definitely one of those situations where we were so close but yet so far away. We did a quick almost 360 degree loop around this iceberg so that everybody could see it in all its glory before making our way over to our next site. And boy was this a sight. We thought the last waterfall was impressive, but this new waterfall over here was even more impressive. The boat got really close to this waterfall, close enough where we could feel the mist of the water coming off of it. While we were there, we actually had the opportunity to see a bald eagle fly from a tree, which was pretty cool as well. After we did our donuts in the water so that way everybody could get a view of this waterfall, the boat once again made its way back out into the fjord and we hit the gas and we were cruising. Unfortunately, after that, there wasn't too much else to see. The boat did make its way practically outside of the fjord itself before we made a u-turn and we hit the gas and we sped back into the fjord to catch up to the disney wonder now as we were making our way back towards the disney wonder the boat did come to a halt where the captain made an announcement that they did spot a whale not too far away from the vessel so we spent about 10 minutes doing donuts in the water hoping to catch the whale before finally it made its appearance i got a real quick video as it only came out for a few seconds before it disappeared into the water and after that exciting moment we made our way back to the Disney Wonder and we were actually very surprised to see the Disney Wonder up close to this very majestic waterfall that we were at earlier. That is where we got off the tender boat and we made our way back on board the ship. So that is the long story short of our personal experience on board the Glacier Explorer tour at Sawyer Glacier. Now it's time for me to share my personal thoughts on this. Overall, was the experience fun? Yes, 100% it was a fun experience. Was it worth paying $300 a person for? No, absolutely not and I'll tell you why. If we were actually able to get close to Sawyer Glacier proper, like the Sawyer Glacier that you see in pictures and videos, then yes, I feel like this excursion definitely would have been worth $300 a person. Because when else do you get the opportunity to get so up close to a glacier of that size? However, the glacier that we got to experience was North Sawyer Glacier, and as I said earlier, it definitely wasn't as impressive and definitely wasn't as visually appealing as what we have seen in advertisements for this excursion. Now again, we were all very grateful to at least see a glacier and to get kind of up close to it, but it just wasn't what we were all expecting. After we spent some time at North Sawyer Glacier, we turned around and made our way back out into the fjord, and basically the rest of the excursion was a nature slash sightseeing tour, which is totally fine and that's good and dandy. However, the biggest problem is that just about everything that we saw from the tender boat is stuff that we could have seen from the cruise ship itself. Yeah, it was really cool to get close to the iceberg that was in the water and yeah it was really cool to get close to the waterfall however all the guests on board the disney wonder who didn't have this excursion practically got to see the same exact thing so after talking to some of the guests that were with us on this excursion, the overall consensus was, yeah, it was fun, but disappointing at the same time because we were all expecting to get over to that massive glacier. Now here's why that this excursion is the biggest gamble that you can take on your cruise. Number one, this excursion can get canceled very easily. If for whatever reason, the weather conditions are not cooperating and there's too much fog, you're not gonna be able to make it into the fjord. Number two, if there's too much ice in the water, you're not gonna be able to get close to the glacier. And number three, if there's too much wildlife in the water, such as sea lions or seals, you're not gonna be able to get close to the glacier. There's so many variables that go into this excursion that there's always the possibility that neither you guys on the excursion or anyone else on the ship is gonna see a glacier that day. Also, when you set sail on the Disney Wonder, you have no idea ahead of time what fjord you're actually going to visit. Now, thankfully, between the Alaskan cruise that we took last year and this year, we were able to experience both Dawes Glacier and Sawyer Glacier. And in my opinion, 
opinion, Dawes Glacier was a lot more extravagant and more visually appealing. The water leading up to the glacier was a beautiful turquoise blue, and the glacier itself was absolutely massive. Leading up to Sawyer Glacier, the water was more of a greenish color, and it definitely wasn't as pretty as what we saw in Dawes Glacier, and on top of that, we went to North Sawyer Glacier rather than South Sawyer Glacier, which from what I've seen is definitely a more extravagant glacier. Again, guys, it is complete luck as to whether or not you feel this excursion was worth the money. Practically everyone's experience on this excursion is going to be different and no two tours are going to be exactly the same. I've seen pictures and video on the internet of people who went on this tour and they saw whales, they saw seals, they saw pieces of the iceberg falling into the water and experiencing white thunder. And that's pretty much all you see advertised on the internet for this tour. The purpose of this video is to show you guys that yeah, you have the possibility to have the time of your life on this excursion. However, you also have the possibility of either having this excursion canceled on you and you not experiencing it at all, or you having a kind of subpar experience. Again, I am very thankful that we got to see a glacier in the first place and we got to get up close and personal to an iceberg and a waterfall. However, after talking to Coda and after talking to some of the guests that were on the boat with us, we all felt like we would have rather this excursion get canceled and have not done it period because practically everything that we saw from the tender boat we also experienced on the ship. If you guys are also looking to get relatively up close and personal to a glacier and you guys actually want to see a glacier out in the wild then make sure you visit the Mendenhall Glacier when you stop in Juneau. The majority of Alaskan cruises do have a stop in Juneau and you are able to take excursions out to the Mendenhall Glacier. There are even other excursions in Juneau where you can get up close and personal to the Mendenhall Glacier in a kayak. I don't know guys, I want to know what you guys think about all of this down in the comments section below. If you guys have experienced the Glacier Explorer Tour with Disney Cruise Line specifically, let me know your experiences and let me know whether or not you guys thought that it was worth it because for us personally, we don't think that it was worth it. However, if we knew for 100% certainty that we were going to be able to get on that tender boat and get up close and personal to either Dawes Glacier or South Sawyer Glacier proper, then we would definitely throw our money at it and we would hop on board it again. But with the gamble that you have to take that you might get a subpar experience, we personally do not see ourselves booking this excursion again. If you guys do decide to book the Glacier Explorer Tour, I want to give you guys my 10 best tips for experiencing this excursion before we end off today's video. Number one, make sure you guys eat a big breakfast or lunch before you head on this tour. If you guys are taking the 12 o'clock excursion, make sure you guys have a late breakfast. While you guys are on this excursion, you are going to miss lunch and you're more than likely going to end up back on the ship around 3 o'clock. The last thing you want is to be hungry on board this boat and the prices for the food on board aren't exactly the cheapest. So make sure you guys do yourselves a favor and eat something before heading on this excursion, whether you're on the 2 o'clock or the 3 o'clock excursion. Number 2. If you guys are on that 3 o'clock excursion and you have early dining, make sure you are prepared to miss dinner in the main dining room. Now the night before our excursion, our main dining room servers let us know ahead of time that it is possible for guests on that 3 o'clock excursion to miss their early dinner seating. We were fortunate enough to arrive back at the Disney Wonder at exactly 5.45, so while we did have to hustle over to the restaurant to get there at a reasonable time, we were hustling and it was entirely possible for us to miss our dinner altogether. Make sure that you guys are prepared for that possibility if you have a 3 o'clock excursion and you have early dinner seating. Number 3. Make sure you bring entertainment for small kids, whether it be a portable gaming device, an iPad, something. This excursion is more than likely going to run you about three hours, and after the initial time that you spend at the glacier, there's probably not going to be too much else to entertain your kids out in the wild. You guys know your kids better than anybody. If you think that they're going to get a little bit fussy sitting there for about three hours, not really looking at much, then definitely make sure you have a means to entertain them while they are on this excursion. Number four, bring a refillable bottle and fill it with water. As I said earlier in the video guys, there is a bar on board this vessel and while they do sell some beverages, I don't recall off the top of my head water being free. It's best to just bring your own refillable bottle off the Disney Wonder and on board the vessel with you so that way you don't have to worry about that. Number 5. Going back to the bar that is located on board the vessel, small snacks are provided for free. However, 
these snacks are just very small. For us, it was Ritz crackers covered in some kind of salmon dip. And it was tasty and we could technically get as much as we wanted. It wasn't really anything filling and it's definitely not meant to be a meal replacement. Number six, if you guys are wanting to purchase snacks or other beverages on board the vessel, they are available for purchase. Make sure you guys do bring cash with you. However, they do take card, but it's just easier to bring cash. And there is quite a variety of snacks and alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages to purchase. There is also a small little gift shop in there too, where you can buy some Alaskan novelties and some plushies. So if you guys are looking to do a little bit of shopping, make sure you guys are prepared for that. Number seven, get the Glacierita. If you guys are looking for a unique alcoholic beverage, make sure you guys purchase the Glacierita. On our voyage, it was about $8 to purchase and it was a pretty decent sized margarita. And the selling point for this drink is that it has real glacier ice in it. Prior to the excursion, the crew of the vessel bring aboard a big chunk of glacier ice onto the ship and they cut it down into smaller pieces so that way they can put it into the glacieritas and sell it to you. This drink was actually pretty delicious and they didn't skimp out on the alcohol either so I definitely think it's a worthy $8 purchase. Number 8. No need to worry guys, there are bathrooms on board, and they are a decent size as well. There is one handicap accessible bathroom if you do need to use it. Now just bear in mind, they're not the most luxurious bathrooms, but they are serviceable and they are more than good enough for whatever business you need to take care of. As always though, I do recommend you use the bathroom before getting off the Disney Wonder. Number 9. Make sure you bring some binoculars. Now, while there wasn't necessarily too much for us to look at on our voyage, I have heard from other guests in the past and from previous videos that I've seen that you do have the possibility of seeing a lot of other animals in the water and in the skies. If you guys don't have your own binoculars with you, I do believe the vessel has a few, but I don't think that they have enough for everybody to use. And number 10, possibly the most important tip that I have for you guys is to make sure you bring warm clothes and or rain gear. You guys are going to be on a small boat hitting high speeds through this fjord and things can get really cold. Trust me, they got really cold. Also, while we had beautiful weather on our excursion day, typically it does tend to rain in that southern Alaska area. Last year during our 2022 cruise, it was drizzling a little bit during our glacier day at Dodd's Glacier. So just make sure you have some rain gear available or make sure your warm clothes are waterproof. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions once again on everything that you saw in today's video down in the comment section below. If you guys want to see the full video from our Glacier Day experience on board the Disney Wonder, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that down in the description below so that way you guys can check it out. And if you guys are interested, you can watch the entirety of our vlog series on board the Disney Wonder for our Alaskan Disney Cruise Line vacation. I want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this review would not be possible and I am eternally grateful for all your incredible support. If you guys enjoyed what you saw here today and you want to see more like it in the future, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel as we have a lot more Disney Cruise Line content coming your way in the very near future. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, and I'll see you guys in the next video.